Hey, what's up, guys? This is Marseille, a.k.a. The Property Pastor, and I got a special treat for you today. Um, I got a good friend of mine, Mr. Eric Bryant with uh, Cash Homes Virginia. Um, Eric is a wholesaler, and uh, he's been in the game for a few years now. I'm um, doing a great job here in, uh, in, in the 757 area of Virginia. So we wanted to bring him on the show today and talk to you guys a little bit about wholesaling. So, Eric, man, welcome to the show, man. We're so glad to have you, you today. And uh, we just, you know, th thanks for coming in and just blessing us with a little bit of information. So, so again, welcome, man. And, and why don't we just start out, man, just tell us a little bit about, you know, yourself, how you got started in real estate investing, you know, when did you start, where, you know, and, and why and all that good stuff. So tell, tell us a little bit, a little bit about yourself, man. Yeah. First of all, man, thank you for having me. Uh, I know we've talked about this in the months coming, even when we first, when I first started investing, you say, yeah, you know, you're going to be doing this. Well, so you kind of drug me through the game, even when those times got rough. Um, but uh, a little bit about me, uh, based out of Hampton, Virginia, um, been investing in Hampton Roads for about two years now. I wasn't actually wholesale. I didn't start actually wholesaling until about last year. Mm. Um, how I got started in real estate was I actually bought a duplex. Um, and so, uh, cause I wanted to get into it. Like one of my, one of my partners at, um, at, at my job where I used to work at, uh, he was a realtor and he was always telling me, you know, you need to get, get into some real estate, you know, get it, make sure you hold some properties cause that's how wealth is being built. So I kind of, mm. uh, I, I listened to that and I actually started doing my own research and ended up uh, buying a duplex. Now, I bought this duplex, right? And everything that could have went south, went <laughs> south. <laughs> so, like, it, it, was, it was terrible, okay? So I'll give you the, give you the short story. Mark, so say, I'm, you know a little about this yeah, story. Yeah, you, I've, you I've know. heard this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, everything that went south, went south. I almost quit, but I hung in there. So. I was um I was looking to buy my first rental property. I had had a good job. I was making good money. I had some extra money that I could invest with. So I wanted to buy my first rental property. Um, I had originally was going to get this turnkey property that was down the street, but um, I was partnered up with a guy that encouraged me. He was supposed to be quote unquote mentoring me. Um, he encouraged me to get this duplex. Now this duplex was tore up. Needed a lot of work. He was like, you know, don't worry, I'll work on it with you. Da, 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 da. We're gonna we're gonna make good, we're gonna get you in there, get it rented out. So, long story short, I close on this duplex. I give the guy my money and I never hear from him again. Ooh. Yeah. So uh that was that was real painful. I know I didn't do any work on that duplex for at least a good two, two and a half, three months, mm -hmm. uh, just kind of curled up like, ah, what do I, I don't know what to do. Just in fetal position. And just <laughs> in a fetal position, like, I don't know what to do. And then like one day, you know, I was talking to my mom, like, you just, you got to work on this dude. We can't just buy, you got to get to work. So um, mm -hmm. shout out to my parents. They helped. They really helped me a lot on, around this journey. So I uh, got out there, started doing some work, fix it up, um, put all of my money into it, every mm -hmm. single dime like when i was finished with it i had no money left okay but it was rented, you know so, so, you, so you were all in on this duplex i was i was all in on this duplex i put okay. all my money in i uh, got a credit card maxed it out um mm. everything wow know, I was all in on this duplex now how, how so, long ago was that um, how many years ago was that that was in 2018 so i bought okay. it. i think i bought the duplex April 2018. Okay. And I finished it. I think it was like fully occupied at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So it took me a while because I had, I, every time I would get a check, I would pretty much put my whole check into that. To the property. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know? Okay. So I was like, all right, I got it. Got to put my whole mm -hmm. check into the property. And okay. So, so. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, while I'm doing that, I, um, uh, I'm listening to bigger pockets and I'm, here's come across this thing called wholesaling. Okay. Mm. So I'm doing a little research on wholesaling. Cause I'm like, it's gotta be an easier way than me just sitting here till like 12 o'clock at night working on this property. Like it's gotta be an easier way to attain these properties. And that's, that's pretty much how I came across wholesaling. I was um, listening to a, a Max Maxwell podcast and, or a YouTube. And I see this guy with this cowboy hat on 
uh, Adam Johnson, uh, one of my mentors, shout out to Adam and Brent. Um, and they were, um, and he was talking about how he was doing these deals uh, with no internet down in Mississippi. And so I was like, man, if he can do these deals with no internet down in Mississippi, I can do this. You know, so I, that's why I just, I hopped in from there. I followed those guys and hopped in. Okay. So, so, so you, so you, you ventured over in the wholesale and basically kind of out of the, I guess the pain of being a landlord and the pain of being, um, you know, a rehabber and, and all that kind of good stuff. So, so, so you had to jump over, you had to really shift gear. So that, when did that happen? Was that like in 20, 2019? Yeah. So, um, 2019, I started, um, actually like doing a little bit of research, doing a little bit of action, cold calling a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and then around like 20, around like April, I kind of was like, all right, I know what I'm doing. It's time to ramp it up and jump in. Okay. So, so I jumped you, in and all that. So, so, so April you, of 2019. So you said April of 2019. So you, so you basically at this point, you're coming up on about a year and a half of wholesaling. Um, right. So in, in that process, man, tell us a little bit about how, you know, things have progressed from, from where you started back last April to kind of where you are today. What, what does business look like for you now? Uh, so where I started at back last April, um, it was just me. Mm-hmm. Um, I was doing everything, calling, dispo on the property, um, just one man show. Okay. So I uh, just wearing all the hats now. Where I'm at now, it's me and I have three people that are working uh, working for me. I don't like to say working for me, working with me, because I always tell gotcha. them, I said this company is just as much yours as it is mine. Without okay. y'all, we can't make this we can't make this work. Gotcha. So gotcha. you know, I want them to have ownership mm-hmm. of this of this company because they're they own it as much as I do. We, without gotcha. one another, we can't make it run. Okay. So so recently, man, just based on some of our conversations. I believe you you've had a, a you know banner month last month. Was it how many deals did you end up doing? Yeah, so we locked up uh we locked up five deals wow. last month. Congrats. Yeah, locked man. up five Congrats. deals last month. And and um, so you, you you've gone from that. When you started, like how long did it take you to kind of close up that first deal? So if you look at from April twenty nineteenth, I mean April twenty nineteen, how long did it really take you to actually close your first deal? Uh, it took me April twenty nineteen. So I didn't close my first deal till about August. Okay. Mid August. Okay. So so you had a, you had a few months in the game, you know, multiple months in between deals to last month, five deals in one month. So that's that's some pretty amazing growth. You know, you hitting some home runs, man, and um, that, and that's that's pretty good, man. So we, you know, definitely congrats to you, man, and to see you. Now, now how old are you again, Eric? I I turned thirty in March. All right, so you just hit the big three zero. So you big three zero. Yeah, hit the big three zero. You know, got your own company, running a business, employing other people, or helping other people to partner with you um to uh to build something and that's man that's that's phenomenal you know and so so i guess when we look at this whole thing you know this whole concept of wholesaling you know you mentioned you know you kind of went on a bigger pockets you start looking around through youtube videos doing a little bit of networking just for the folks who maybe aren't aren't that familiar with wholesaling um tell us a little bit about what that entails right when you actually look at it, like what what is wholesaling as, as you know kind of in a whole give us the nutshell version of what wholesaling is Okay, so wholesaling is pr- pretty much selling the rights uh, of a of a property to a buyer. Uh, okay. So what we so what we do uh, as my job is I'll go out and I will talk to sellers or potential sellers that are thinking about selling their property, okay. and I will get and we'll come to an agreement uh, that works for them and us. And what I'll do is I'll take that contract, take that piece of paper to the buyer and say, hey, Mr. Buyer, I have um, 123 Main Street under contract mm-hmm. for 20,000. And okay. I will sell 123 Main Street, the, the rights to this property, the rights to buy this property to you for 30,000. Okay. So I'm doing this literally with no money coming out of my pocket, right? giving it to the buyer. So I didn't spend any, anything, I didn't give the buy, anything to, to buy that property at all. Got you. So, so as, as you know, as I'm hearing it, you know, for the folks listening, you know, wholesaling is kind of like, you're kind of like the middle man. You're almost like, you're almost like a matchmaker, you know, you kind of right. li- linking up. Right. Uh, and and are, are you primarily dealing with just investors as your buyers? Like, would you, you would only do this with an investor? Would you, you never do this with like a retail buyer, would you? 
So yeah, I mainly do it with investors. You can do it with retail buyers, just depending on what strategy you use. Mm -hmm. uh, for for one, uh, for for an example, we did something that's called a lease option. Okay. Uh, and what we did was we took over our properties um, subject to, which means we pretty much took over the mortgage of the property. Mm -hmm. And now we own that rental property. So we mm -hmm. uh, we owned it as a military family. Um, they were holding two mortgages. Everything was getting tight. Had it on the market for a while. I couldn't sell it. So that's gotcha. where I came in. I provided a solution. I said, hey, you know, we'll be glad to take this property over from you. Um, you don't have to worry about it. We'll pay the, we'll pay the mortgage. Mm -hmm. And you guys are going with your lives um, down in whatever state that you're in. And so what we did was we took over that mortgage mm -hmm. and then we um, put a tenant in it, a tenant buyer. So okay. tenant buyer um, is wants to live in the property, uh, but they don't necessarily have the credit to go, to go through a conventional Okay. Uh, to get a conventional mortgage. Uh, so what we do is we'll provide uh, an opportunity for them to own the property by, by leasing it to them with the option to buy later down the line. So we do deal with people that um, don't aren't necessarily investors as well with that strategy. Okay. So, so you, you got a little bit on the retail side. What about, so what, what's your typical uh, end buyer? You know, is this more like a person that's doing flips? Is it somebody who's like buying whole? Well, who, who are you typically bringing that piece of paper to, to disposition it? Or that's the, a great or the, question. For the markup side. Um, that's a great question. Uh, now, it just depends on the numbers. Okay. Because um, I deal with, with both, actually. I deal with um, half and half uh, the buy and hold guys that um, if the numbers work out as far as repair-wise and what they're trying to make, then I'll sell it to them. If the numbers work out with... Um, if they're trying to flip it and then put it back on the market, I said mm -hmm. to them. So I would say I have like an equal amount of both. Okay. Uh, okay. So in, you're, in you're not really like now, now has that changed since you started? Like, so in other words, back in April of last year, were you going after, you know, so it sounds like you, you're kind of catering the property to the end user. So back mm -hmm. in April of last year, were you doing that same kind of strategy or have you just added to your toolbox that allows you to do more? So back in April last year, I was just like the wild, wild west. You know, I was just okay. running and gunning and whatever I got, you know, I got. Uh, now, how I look at it is I, I look at the seller situation, what they want for the property. Mm -hmm. And in my in the back of my head, I'm like, OK, I can sell this to someone that's going to rent it out if the, uh, if the numbers work. Because I know my buyer's numbers, so I know what, what they're putting into the property, okay. what they want in cash flow, mm -hmm. um, if they're going to rent it. And I also know the the contracting side of my buyers um, so i know how much they're putting in the property how much they want to make after they sell it okay. so based on that analysis that's really who i'm going to target to who i'm going to sell it to got you got you now now let me ask this question what what makes a wholesaler different than a realtor right i mean they'd seem very mm -hmm. different so what what is it you know how what allows you to be a wholesaler you know as opposed to being a, a realtor Right, right. Now, I, I thought of being a realtor when I first started. Um, and someone had told me, you know, being an investor, you have a little bit more free reign. So um, realtors are, I would say they are they're notarized a lot more than private investors because realtors, you have to get a license mm -hmm. to do it. Um, okay. gov you have someone governing over you as far as what you can do. And, okay. and what you can't do. Okay. Gotcha. Um, being an investor or a wholesaler, I don't have those rules. Okay. okay. Um, I can, I can pretty much do what I want and I don't have to answer to anybody but myself. I don't gotcha. have to answer gotcha. um, to the realtor company I work with. I don't have to pay a fee for being a realtor or anything like that. Mm. Uh, I just, I answer to myself. So gotcha. that would say that's the main gotcha. difference. And then being also being, an investor or a wholesaler, um, you kind of can create your own spread. Now, realtors, when they sell a property, they're usually getting anywhere between, an average is 3% for the sale mm -hmm. of a property. Okay. Being a wholesaler, you can create your own fee for whatever you get your get the property at Got you. and sell the property at. Okay. So instead of 3%, I can get one third mm -hmm. of, that, of that value. So Got let's you. say I sell it for, uh, and I get it for 20 and sell it for 30. Okay. I, I, I get one third of what I just sold it for. Right, right. So so it almost sounds like, you know, so just so, so everybody's clear listening, 
Um, when, when it comes to being a wholesaler, there's no, you know, licensing you necessarily need. There's no like regulatory uh, realtors association or whatever, you know, kind of, kind of those uh, entities look like and you don't have to be connected like to a, to a broker, right? You, you don't have to right. hang your license on a broker and there's right. no, no examinations, none of that stuff. So basically, you know, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a free market society is what it sounds like. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and also if I remember correctly, you said there wasn't really any kind of barrier to entry from a cost perspective. It didn't really cost you anything in a deal to, to necessarily get started. So, um, as, as you look at it, walk, walk us a little bit through a typical, you know, deal, right? What, what does that look like for you? And let's say, for example, you let's, let's use a flip, you know, so if you got a flip coming up, um, or you're, you know, you come across a property, basically tell us a little bit about, you know, what do you do to go out and find it, um, on the front end, you know, how do you identify it? How do you run the numbers? You know, and then how do you actually, you know, connect with that uh, that back end buyer? What, what does that look like for for everybody? Right. Um, so you can go out to find it multiple ways. Uh, me, I mainly use two. Um, me, we'll we'll pull a list. Okay. Um, so we'll pull certain lists with absentee owners. Uh, absentee okay. owners means it's people that own properties but don't necess- but don't live in them. Okay. Um, so if they're not owner occupied, they're renting it out, or it's vacant. So we'll pull a list of absentee owners, or I, I like to drive for dollars, especially since now that it's been COVID, you know, you can get out of the house for a few hours, uh, listen to a podcast while you drive around. Drive for dollars, what, what that means, everybody, is that means that I'm actually out there in my car and I'm just driving around looking for vacant houses. So houses that okay. are boarded up, yep. uh, houses that um, tall grass, uh, things like that, just look the stress, looks like nobody's living in them. And so I'll go out and I'll drive, I'll get those addresses and I'll call those people. Um, okay. So those are the main, main ways that we're reaching out to them. So um, let's see, I'll, I'll actually give you an example of a deal that we did that for, um, that we closed on earlier this month. So I drove for dollars um, and I reached out to the seller. They, they lived out of town, down south somewhere. And um, they were military. And they couldn't rent the property because it just needed so much work and it was vacant. Um, and it didn't have any updates. And it didn't want to, they were looking to come back and, and fix it up. Mm-hmm. However, some stuff had went on with COVID and stopped everybody from traveling. They didn't feel safe coming down here to, to actually finish the work. So um, I called them and I said, hey, you know, what if I can help you out and buy this and as this condition? Um, what, you know, how does that sound? And so, uh, we negotiated price and, okay. uh, uh, now that I have that price, uh, I go through my list of buyers and I say, Hey, I have this property out here in the Hampton Roads area and I'm selling it for such and such. And so I had a few buyers come by. Um, now, now, not all the buyers are going to, it's not going to work for them. Some buyers cost rehab costs are higher than are higher than others so it's not gonna work for everybody so i had a few people come by and i had one particular guy and it was like hey this will work for me excuse me this will work for me um we'll get you the emd and we can close within the next two weeks okay and we'll start right. just like that got you now, you, you mentioned um and I, you you mentioned basically when you're driving for dollars um calling people up so how do you end up finding, you know, you know if, I'm, if I'm driving along, you know, a person's driving out there and they literally just see, you know, like you said, one, two, three Main Street, that person's mm-hmm. number is not necessarily listed, you know, right. how, how do you go, how do you go and find these people to actually talk to them? Right. Okay. So what I do after I get the address, I'll do what they call skip tracing. Okay. Uh, and I'll look up uh, that number through skip tracing. Now what skip tracing is, it allows you to enter in the property address. And it'll match that person's phone number with mm-hmm. that property address. Gotcha. So now that I have that phone number, uh, what I'll do is I'll call that person. And I'll say, hey, I was in a neighborhood and I saw uh, your property at 123 Main Street. And I, um, we're buying houses in the area. And I just want to reach out to you to see if you consider selling the property. Gotcha. And then carry the conversation along from there. Okay. So, so you, you, you're on the phone calling them up. Um, and then they say, yep, I'm willing to sell my house to you, this, that, and the third. And then at that point you put in place a contract, right? If I'm, if I'm remembering right. the process, 
And then you're going to go offer that contract over to a, a, an actual buyer. Um, I think you mentioned the cash buyers list, right? right? So is that literally people using cash? Right. So some of them use their own cash. Okay. Uh, some of them, uh, the majority of them use private lenders uh, okay. that fund their projects. Mm -hmm. And some of them use what they call hard money. Now, hard money is a, um, it's pretty much a, a, a company or individual that syndicates, um, syndicates money and he lends it out for mm -hmm. higher than what you would get it to, uh, higher than what you would get it for if you were um, getting it for private money. So right. we'll, they'll do any of those three. Yeah. And for those of y'all who, you know, we, we got a few videos out there to talk about some of the lending sources. Private money is extremely expensive. Um, but usually the, the good part about people, the reason that people use it is because it's all in the strength of the deal. You know, so if you're paying a 10, 10, 12 percent, um, you know, interest rate. But then at the end of the day, you're going to make, you know, 50,000, 100,000 on a on a flip. And you don't mind paying for that for that money. So um, just yeah, hard, hard money is is expensive, but it definitely has it has its usage because it's fast so right um, right so, and, so, um, go ahead no i was gonna say you're right and 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 this the criteria to get hard money is not um it's not is not as hard as it would to be to get get it from a bank gotcha so gotcha. you know the banks they want to see if you if you have a, a steady job or and, and what's going all into the deal when a hard money just want he just particularly looks at the deal and mm -hmm. sees what the cops are going for and then he'll Based how much money he'll lend you off of uh, okay. the strength of the deal. Got you, got you. So, so in like what what kind of tools, man? Does you, does you use? I mean, do you literally call like what what? Well, let me ask this question this way: What 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 skills do you need? Like in other words, I'm just saying, okay, mm. I'm gonna go call this this homeowner up and say, hey, look, I was right. driving by. Why don't you sell me your house? You know. So I'm assuming <laughs> in uh, in order for you to to get uh, for it to work. So you can get your, your difference, right? You can get paid. You got to buy the house kind of low. I, I can't imagine that if a person says I want it for a hundred thousand, I'm imagining you probably not buying it for a hundred. Are you, you got, you got to kind of talk them down. Right. So, yeah, I mean, if the, if the person wants a hundred thousand and a deal works at a hundred thousand, mm -hmm. then yeah, we have no problem giving a hundred thousand with the ass, but okay. majority of the time, that's not usually how it works, you know? So, um, you, you're going to have to talk them down. So, I mean, the skills that you would you would need, I would say, are like good negotiation skills, sales skills. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, I have a sales background for all that. For everybody that doesn't know, I, I used to sell cars for like two years, and I was like the top. It's my second year there. Um, I was like the top in the dealership in the, in the uh, dealership there, and then I was like top. I think it was like seven percent in the nation uh, for selling cars. Um, and so I have a sales uh, sales background when it comes to that. So when it comes to talking to motivated sellers, I'll, I'm a lot more comfortable than that, a lot of other people because I'm used to having those conversations. I'm used gotcha. to building rapport and being able to get over those objections that they that they tell me. So I would definitely say negotiation and sales skills mm -hmm. definitely one of the main skills that you're going to need to have. Gotcha. Um, you're going to have to have to have some sort of uh, system place um in order to to do all this which i i'll be honest and say systems aren't my strong suit okay. so that's why you have uh, a group of people or a circle or people that you can reach out to to help you where you're not strong at mm. um, so you're definitely going to have to have those systems in place um you're going to have to have some sort of organization skills to keep everything organized again i'm not the you like people don't understand you don't need to be perfect <laughs> to do this business because right. you know I, there's a lot of stuff that i can work on my strength usually is 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 in the sales the sales and negotiation side mm -hmm. of things just because right. of my background but all those other skills i'm lacking in i figure out along the way gotcha. and I, I make it work okay so you so you, you kind of you kind of built the team around you you know to to help shore up those areas that you didn't feel quite as strong in and i think that's a good point you know because you know like just like just like you were saying um you start out and you're like yeah i'm really good at talking to people or maybe i'm good at construction or maybe i'm good at the management side but it kind of takes you know a whole picture right but if you don't have all the pieces you can still surround yourself with folks that'll help you get there and i, I think that's 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 good and that's to be uh, and that's probably a, a you know a key attribute that helped you to scale your business. So, um, quick question for you: One thing in terms of the, in terms of the process, you know, we talked about the front end of 
uh, locating, you know, finding the owner, talking them, you know, into, um, you know, actually selling you their property. But what do you have to do? Um, like if you're going to go and actually present that deal to your cash buyer, mm-hmm. how do you, how are you estimating? Let's say for example, it's, it's a flip, right? So are you actually right. going in and saying, um, this is how much I think is going to cost you. And this is how much I think you mm-hmm. can make after it. What, what is that? What does the disposition process look like for you? What things do you have to do to actually get that property ready to, uh, to sell it? Right. Um, so you want to know your market. You want to know exactly what the homes are going for. Okay. You want to know what you'll be able to rent the homes to. So you can present it to both sides. Mm. Uh, that's very important. You also want to know like your buyers and kind of like what they're spending, uh, like spending to rehab a property. So okay. I know a few. I know a few of my buyers. Average ki- uh, price to rehab a kitchen is between five and eight thousand dollars, depending on if they're going to do it for a rental or if they're okay. going to flip it and make it look real nice with the, with the granite countertops and whatnot. Okay. You know, so it's, it's going to be between five and eight thousand dollars, depending on who I'm talking to. So, you so know, you kind of um, have like some some standards. In other words, like just some ballpark ranges to help you do your estimates and stuff. Right, right. Gotcha. And now when I first started, when I first started, I had no idea. That was probably the hardest thing when I first started was kind of mm-hmm. estimating my repairs. Okay. Because yeah. wherever you're at, uh, depending on like where in the country you're at, your repair estimates are going to be different. Right, you know? right. So what I did when I first started was um, I reached out to some contractors and I said, and I had this house that I was looking at. And I said, hey, I just wanted to get you to get a bid on the property, see which, you know, how much you would charge to do all this work. And I had a little piece of paper and I wrote down how much, you know, how much would it cost to repair this roof or how much would it cost to drywall up, mm. uh, how much would it cost to do plumbing and things like et cetera, et cetera. And okay. what I did, I paid that contractor for his time. Got you. And then I called two more contractors and then I just took an average of the three. And that's okay. how I got my how I got my repair estimate. Gotcha, so that gotcha. way I know like, okay, this house is going to probably be an average of this amount, uh, repair costs. Okay. Put it out so, there. so, so you, you actually, you know, you actually brought somebody out and just paid them just to give you an estimate primarily. And then you mm-hmm. kind of just built that over time. So it sounds like, you know, cause some, some people might be listening and they're like, okay, I'm just going to call three contractors and fake, like, you know, I'm going to actually, you know, give them this job to give me a bid and then I don't ever call them back. So right, right. Is that, it sounds like that's not not a recommend not that's a recommended not. way to way to do it. No, that's a, I mean, that's a good so, way to burn some bridges, probably. Yeah, you don't you don't want to do it like that. I mean, I kind of I kind of spilled a guts on how what I did. So mm-hmm. uh, I can't even remember where I found these guys at. Um, I think some some I just talked to on those. I saw they had a contract to work on. Okay, or, and some guys I just I saw working on a property just driving down the street. And I ask him for this and I say, hey, you know, my name's Eric. I'm just, I want to, I see you guys doing work. Looks like you guys doing a great job here. I'm, I got a property I'm thinking about buying. I just want to get a bid and, you know, don't worry, I'm a, I'll pay you for your time. Okay. Um, it's only going to take 30 to 45 minutes. And when they, gotcha. when they came in, they, they gave me um, some bids. After that, I gave them like 50 bucks mm-hmm. and they were fine. Right. You know, so. Yeah. Y- 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 y'all notice how you know he was kind of buttering up the contractor you can see the people skills in yeah. there the building rapport yeah. you know you can definitely see how negotiation is key and kind of that sales background becomes important um as you look at that right did, did you primarily just hone your skills for negotiation through your previous background uh what what kind of resources like let's say for example a person's like man i'm i'm not that great with sales i'm not that great with negotiation what 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 advice would you give somebody in order to kind of enhance that skill set? Mm-hmm. So you gotta you gotta train yourself. Um, you have to buy educate. I say you, you have to definitely educate yourself. You have to train yourself. Okay. Watch YouTube videos, and it's all about reps. So, mm-hmm. uh, like when I first started like negotiation or any type of sales in my old job, I was like terrified to get on the phone. Like, mm-hmm. you know, what if these people tell me no? What if this 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 happens? It's like terrified like i don't i don't want to kill this i don't know what i signed up for it applying right. for this job <laughs> <laughs> so so but it's just like you you have to kind of get over that fear and just start making those calls and then practicing your script uh, like uh, as i in my business a script is key so okay T- tell us business, what a script is for, for those who don't know so a script is pretty much um is i would it's a 
script is pretty much how, how, uh, what we have, what we're going to say, already pre written, what we're going to say to the seller once we get them on the line. Okay. Okay. So it's basically some, some pre written, you know, uh, questions or things that you're actually going to present. Okay. Got you. Right. Got you. So, so in my business, all my, all my callers, all my partners, they have to go buy a script. Got um, you. And we, and we train like night and day. Like I don't even let them get on a phone call for the for pretty much for the first five days a week mm -hmm. until they are, I feel like they're comfortable. So you okay. have to definitely, you have to definitely practice that mm -hmm. and, and make sure um, that your, that your skills are right. You don't want to sound robotic either when you're going. Yeah, that's, that's what I was curious about, about, man. I'm, I just got, I just had this vision of, you know, pulling up a piece of paper, like, hi, my name is Eric. I'm a wholesaler. Can I buy right. your house? <laughs> you know, so, so, so it sounds like, you know, you almost have like, uh, so you mentioned reps. Um, uh -huh. are you like literally role playing with people? Like when, when you're doing this, like if you're either training somebody or you yourself, were you literally, before I ever called anybody, was I actually just kind of role, were you actually role playing and kind of, you know, giving feedback and getting, receiving feedback? Right. So yeah, I role played a little bit. Um, okay. uh, I recorded some of my calls as well. and went over them. So okay. anybody that has like a dollar, mm -hmm. it's kind of like, I would say it's kind of like watching film. If yeah, like that's, that's what I heard when I said that. Yeah, yeah, you you're watching your film, so you're listening to your calls, and you're seeing mm -hmm. what you're doing wrong and what you're doing right. I still do that to this day, gotcha. especially like when some of my my follow up calls. Yeah, trying to see what I'm doing wrong, see what I'm doing right. So, uh, and I learned that I learned that all from like the sales industry. You know, mm -hmm. they would have um, recorded calls, and we go back and we listen kind to them back through. Yeah, up. right. So okay, now uh, you, we you, definitely you, listen listen to our calls and go back and after that role play and so i would just and on top of that just the more that you do the mm -hmm. more people that you call the more comfortable that you're going to feel got you uh, making those calls and your confidence going to rise you know okay. especially if you're listening to your your calls every night and seeing what you did wrong seeing what you right. did right so the next day you're like okay i'm excited i'm i can't wait for someone to tell me what this guy told me today because right, i got something right. for him <laughs> so you, so you're, you're literally, you know, getting that feedback and just continuing to, to apply it. Now, now, how did you, how did you deal with that first? So I'm assuming when you got that first deal, I think you mentioned, you know, you started in April of last year and then you mm -hmm. closed your first deal in August. I'm assuming that the first person you called did not, you know, end up in a, in a close. Absolutely not. Yeah. No. So how, how did you, how did you deal with that, man? Just from, you know, kind of the uh, rejection or the, no, I'm not interested. Um, or I've sent out, you know, all of this information. I've contacted all these people and nobody, nobody seems to be interested. How, how did you deal with that? Uh, well, I just, I had a lot of people um, that I kept up with, you know, just, just to hold me accountable. You know, you, okay. you for yeah, example, you always talk, you always told me, don't give up, you know, keep pushing forward. Mm -hmm. um, then uh, when I first started, uh, one of my guys down in South Carolina, two of my guys down in South Carolina, uh, Andrew and Malachi, shout out to them. Um, we used to have like these mo these Monday morning meetings um, every Monday to uh, hold each other accountable. Okay, like all right, we're taking this step mm -hmm. to, to try and get this deal, and we go over it the next week to make sure like, hey, did you did you do that? Did you do those those five hundred calls a day that you said you were going to do? You know, so we would have people that hold us accountable. So it's a lot easier when you mm -hmm. have a group of people right. that strive right. to to do what you're trying to do and and, and go the distance with you. Got you. Got you. You, you, you mentioned something in there you, in, in, in that accountability about, um, did you contact your 500 people? Talk right. about, talk about the number of, I want to say feelers or touch points that you put out to actually, you know, generate a deal. Right. So like when I was first, when I was first starting out, man, I used to be on the phone like all day. Like, okay like four hours in the morning four hours in the afternoon um just on and out I'm, i was probably doing anywhere between like 1200 calls a day okay, um, okay. Just, in one day just plowing just plowing <laughs> in one day i would say average i would say average average like a, a thousand uh 800 okay. to a, it would be anywhere between 800 to 12 to 12 1200 just depending on the day so some people okay. would pick up a dollar and go to the next call right you know? right so, but that was my average of people that I was trying to hit during okay. the day. And I was just, just plowing along, plowing mm -hmm. along, just getting okay. beat up. <laughs> you know, when I first started, you're like, getting you're, beat up. Like, you're like no. the real estate version of a telemarketer, right. man. <laughs> <laughs> getting 
get beat up, but I was just working through the nose, you know. Mm, I, right. I was working through the nose. I was like, okay, I, I can't say this on the phone because that don't alarm them, and right. I know how to handle this now, you know. Yeah. So. So you, you, you mentioned working through the nose and I, I like that. I, I think we really, you know, I think it's a key takeaway because um, working through nose is a lot of people is going to tell you no, but you can't really focus on the nose. You, you're looking for the yes. Um, right. So, so what, what kind of response rate can people actually expect? You know, what's realistic? So if I send out, if I make those thousand, it, it just we'll circle back to, to the process a little bit because mm-hmm. um, you know, you said you made a thousand calls. I'm assuming you got to go and actually do showings out of those, and then mm-hmm. out of those, you know, I guess, what, what do you call them, like leads or something to that effect? Right, right. Right. So, and then, so you're going to get appointments and then out of that, a true deal. So out of those a thousand, how do those numbers actually shake out, you know, typically? What, what's some typical numbers people can expect? Um, for, for, all right. So let's, I'm trying to think back when I first started out, I think it was like for every, I think like for, it was about for every, like four or five thousand calls i would get um i think i would get a deal i think it was about four or five thousand because that was a while ago so they've changed mm-hmm. they changed so much now right, that I, right. I, i'm monitoring like my my people that do the call now mm-hmm. you know? okay um but, you- but i but i would say when i was first starting out i would say anywhere between five and about seven thousand calls probably would have got me a deal okay so, so definitely a person can't expect to make, you know, a hundred touch points and close a deal, or they can't expect to, you know, put out five pieces of mail or send out five mm-hmm. text messages, um, or, or run one ad campaign and expect to close a deal. So this is, sounds like it's very much a numbers game. Right. You know, I think Absolutely. that's important. You know, as you look at it, you know, we call it casting a, casting a wide net, you know, it's kind of like a funnel. Right. You got to fill the funnel up in order for deals to actually, you know, kind of pop out the back end. So, um, t- tell us a little bit about, you know, and I appreciate, you know, just kind of going into that a little bit. So that it's just, it's just first, if a person is considering starting a wholesale and just to kind of temper their expectations, um, so that they're not discouraged just to kind of let them know what you've already gone through. So, mm-hmm. um, it sounds like you've kind of evolved in your business too, right? So right. when you first started, you were making a thousand calls a day, you know, now you've got a few people working with you. What role has technology played um, in scaling and in becoming more efficient, you know, in what you do as a wholesaler? Oh, it's played a huge role. Um, so, like, we use a system where um, when I'm training, we do live trainings. Okay. So, uh, after I train them and I feel they're comfortable on the phone, um, I'll, I'll sit on the phone with them for a few hours and I'll listen to their calls just to make sure that they're good. So technology's played a huge role okay. uh, in that. Um, and just in being able to track and seeing what they're saying. So I think, cause my, my mind is based out of like, um, really just calling people, calling a lot of, calling a lot of people. And so in order to do that, I have to make sure, uh, that my, that my call partners are actually sharp on the phones. So, um, uh, and then we have a rule, you know, we have a rule in my, in my business. So I tell them, I said, and we just started this rule like last week. I said, every day I need to hear your worst call. Okay. So I don't care right. what it is. I need to hear your worst call. If you think you, you think you did, it wasn't the best or whatever. I need you to log it down mm-hmm. and put it on a sheet so we can listen to it. Because I just, they, I think they thought they were going to get in trouble for their worst call. But I, I always get excited. I said, awesome. You know, it's, it's a terrible call, but it's a, it's a great call. Because mm-hmm. now we have some room mm-hmm. to get better. Gotcha. You know, so we, gotcha. we try and take that negative and turn it to a positive. So I made gotcha. it, I made it a requirement now that every call, any call today, write down our top three bad calls, I would say, mm-hmm. and then pick two. Okay. And then we go over in our morning meeting gotcha. to see gotcha. where we could have uh, got better at. Okay. Now what, what about keeping up with all of these folks? You know, you, you, you're calling 5,000 people, you know, you got now, not, not only you calling 5,000 people, now you got a team of two or three people calling all of these people, how do you keep everything organized? You know, how do you keep oh, it? Man. You know, how does that work? It's, it's, it's working. It's work in progress. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you, you don't, you don't have like a yellow pad just with right. 5,000 no, numbers no. on it, right? No, it's a, it's a work in progress. So, I mean, right now we're getting the system built to be a little bit more organized. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're getting the system built so we can enter uh, like a CRM. So we can okay. enter all of our leads. Uh, t- tell us, tell us what a CRM stands for. What does that? So a CRM stands for a Customer Relations Management uh, System. 
Okay. So uh, we want to start inputting all of our leads in there. So right now we're just keeping it real simple. It's an Excel sheet okay. with details of um, of the person, property, situation, um, property description, motivation. Okay. Got and you. we just want and we just hit that list. Um, like we'll follow. I'll, I'll be responsible for following up with that list mm-hmm. and reaching out to those people and trying okay. to make it feel work. Now, what what role? And you 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 said something I really want to dig into. It's about follow up. You know, so the whole purpose of that CRM is about organization, but it's also kind of helping you to know. Hey, I talked to this person um, six months ago. They seem mm-hmm. a little bit motivated, and now I need to follow up. So what what is what is the role of follow up as a wholesaler? H- how important is that? A follow. Up is, is really important like and 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 here's what i'll say because the only reason i'm saying that's because i've missed out on deals mm. due to not following up enough you know okay so for instance like when i first started um i i had i remember this one this one lady i was like oh yeah she's like she's ready she's ready she's just not ready yet and so i would follow up like every i was I, not as much as i should probably like every couple of weeks okay maybe every month and then I remember I called her one month and she was like, oh, I sold that property. Oh, wow. So you, you lost, lost like, it because what? you didn't follow yeah. up. Because oh. I didn't follow up enough. Right, you right. Know? Okay. So you, you had to make sure you follow up, but you also have to make sure you follow up enough. So I was like, mm-hmm. okay, I have gotcha. to really put this down in my schedule mm-hmm. to make sure I follow up so I don't lose any more of these deals. Gotcha. So yeah, yeah you that- it okay, probably was like, a sour so feeling. Wrong. You just like, man. Oh I just... my god, terrible! Because I knew how much I could have made on that yeah. deal, and I was like, oh, that was a great deal. That's what she wanted. She was just waiting on the time, and it wasn't yeah. right. Yeah, and I looked. And I see how much she sold it for. I was like, oh, that's oh, terrible. Wow. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that, that's like uh, was it Le- Leon Johnson always says. He says that's a that is that was an expensive seminar. It's expi- yeah, expensive. Yeah, expensive seminar. Like Leon so. said, shout out to Leon. <laughs> yeah, shout simple. out, shout out to to Leon and Brent and Adam and those guys down at, down in Mississippi. Yeah, um, goats. yeah so so speaking of them guys, right? So you you mentioned earlier um, about you know Monday morning calls, like minded people. Tell us about the folks who've you know really played a big role in mentoring you, and what kind mm-hmm. of things have they taught you? You know, in, in uh, the past year or two. Right. Yeah. Um, they taught me a lot, man. Um, as far as like negotiation, Adam's like one of the best negotiators I know. Um, this guy is so smooth. Like every time I hear him talking on the phone to himself, I'm like, man, that's probably some of the smoothest stuff I've ever heard in my life. Um, so yeah, Adam smooth. Um, Brent's definitely a systems guy. So okay. as far as like organizing your systems, um, Brent's taught me a lot about that, keeping everything systemized, organized, having the KPIs there. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, tell, tell us about KPI, I man. Using all, all these big these big acronyms. Tell us what KPI is. KPIs are key performance indicators. So gotcha. uh, it's pretty much measuring your stats. Mm. Um, so we just hired on a bunch of people right now. So what I'm doing at the end of the month, I have my admin assistant putting together all the numbers for August because they, they literally just started probably the end of July. Okay. Um, and so she's going to be putting the, the numbers together for all of August to see, okay, out of all these calls that they made, this is how many leads we got. Mm-hmm. This is how many contracts we got, this is how many deals we had, this is how many deals we had to fall through. Okay. Uh, compared to, you know, so we know exactly, okay, we need to hit this amount of calls to generate these, this amount of deals. Gotcha. So that's gotcha. certain, and, and Brent used to harp on me about that. <laughs> <laughs> he used to harp on me about that. So, um, yeah, those guys have really taught me a lot as far as like pretty much the basics and the foundation of getting started. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm, pretty sure like i missed on a lot of heart heartaches and pains because i've heard of a lot more people taking longer than that, that three months to get their first deal got you, know? you. yeah so um definitely shout out to them um and also shout out to uh chris uh chris up in in, in richmond he's been helping me out a lot we've been working a few deals uh chris jefferson uh, okay. working a few deals together and uh, he's been helping me out a lot too so shout out to all of those guys and you marseille like i'm me and you we've had some uh <laughs> We had some great conversations to help, helping out, like when you first getting started and just like understanding, um, understanding like rental numbers, because that's yeah. something that I would struggle with until you know sure. we actually like sat down, right, and right, broke it down, and like okay, yeah, we're looking at got to get this, this. Don't forget to put in your your repairs you might need for the month, mm. 
vacancies and stuff like that. Gotcha. So, you know, that's why it's always good to to stick around like the players in your market mm-hmm. um, and just play people that are doing doing good. Yeah, like, that, that's so surround yourself with those. Yeah. People. You that know. that's key, man. You know, networking. And sometimes, you know, it seems like we try to, you know, folks, you know, we, we we're individualistic society, so folks try to do it in a vacuum, try to do it alone. But the beautiful part about having a mentor is that they've already learned, you know, they've already kind of gone through that process. And it sounds like you've definitely benefited, you know, especially in areas that weren't your primary skill set. You know, so mm-hmm. for everybody listening, man, it's just it's critical to surround yourself with people who know their stuff, people who've already done it. And you can learn from their wins. But even almost more more importantly, you can learn from their losses, you know. Right. So I I think that's fantastic, man. I, I can definitely see, you know, I've watched the growth in you from when you started, man. And I know the sky's the limit, you know. Especially I looked at your your last numbers. I'm like, okay, he's getting ready to, y'all y'all keep an eye on this guy's name. You, you're gonna see him more <laughs> and more. So, uh, that, that's good stuff, man. So so let's let's pivot a little bit. Um, you know, let's say I'm you know I'm, I'm trying to start out on, in wholesaling. You know, I've kind of nailed down what I want to do. What advice do you give a person, you know, who's, and I know you've touched on a little bit of it, but if you could give, you know, two, three things of, of advice for, hmm. for a new wholesaler, uh, what would you tell them? Um, don't be afraid to mess up. Okay. Okay. You're going to do it. You're going to make a lot of mistakes starting out. Even with, even with mentors, you're, you're just going to make some mistakes. It's, it's just part of the game you're going to miss to do it yeah you're going to miss a, you're going to miss shots you know but you still got to take the shot out in front of basketball i used to play basketball you know so you, you're going to miss a lot of jump shots but you mm. still got to take the shot if you're open right you know um so don't be afraid to mess up but you just got to make sure that you learn from from that mistake okay and then really realistically just get started i know okay. some so many people are just they're frozen, you know, information, they're looking at all these YouTube videos, um, they're reading all these books, mm-hmm. but they haven't did anything yet. Right. Like, don't be afraid to get it started. Okay. Don't let, you got to take some sort of action. You got to, you know, some sort of money making generated activity you mm-hmm. have to do um, yeah. so you can learn. So get out there. I, I always tell, I call this, I say, Get out there and make as much mistakes as possible. Just make sure we learn from them, okay? And I tell them, no question is a stupid question. Mm. Even if you ask the same question twice, I want to make sure you get it before we get back on the phone. Right. Okay? So right. make sure you do that and surround yourself with like-minded people because it's going to get it's going to get hard at some point in time, you know? And just having all those people to help uplift you and keep you going is is so so crucial to have that those people in your circle because I can tell you there's been days when I'm like, man, I, I don't know, man. I don't know if I can do this anymore. Yeah. And, you know, I, I call one of my buddies and I even talk to you like, all right, come on, man. You know, yep. get up. You got to, you got to keep going. You got to keep going. So it's always good to have those people in your circle. Absolutely, man. Great, great, great mindset questions, man. You know, and as you look at it, you know, you're going to fail. You know, I, I know I have, we all have, you know, and the thing about it is that's just part of the process. When I look at a, you know, a little baby learning how to walk, I've never seen one of them, you know, fall and say, you know what, I guess I just won't be able to walk. You know, they're right. so determined to, to figure it out and they just keep on going, man. You know, and I, I've, I've seen you do that. And I think that's the good part about it. You know, a person who's determined to succeed, they, they definitely can. So, so, so good stuff, man. And, um, I guess that as you know, we, we are to wrap up here, but uh, a couple of last questions for you. Uh, you told us a little bit about a horror story as a landlord, you know, horror story as a property owner. Do you have any frustrating deals or, uh, you know, just fails as a wholesaler, um, that, that you've gone through and, and then tell us about that. And then some of the lessons that you learned. Mm-hmm. Oh man. Um, one particularly, this was like my first deal. Okay. My first deal or first one I got in a contract was was a deal i you know i found the property owner i didn't even know he had the property told him i said hey look i can get you a little bit of money for it if you're open to it oh he said oh yeah of course of course yeah 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 so he got it negotiated got under contract like i had the i had under under i had a contract for a real great price Mm -hmm. and i already had sold it to an investor right so i'm like okay boom all right we're about to 
this is about to close our first one. And so I give it to this title company. Now this is an inherited property, so the title's a little messy. So for uh. for for those who don't know what an inherited property is, let's say somebody somebody that you're related to passes away and they have stuff that they leave to you. One of the, one of the things that they leave to you is a house. Okay. So he had his his parents had left him this house that he had completely forgot about for like 10, 12 years. You know, I need them kind of problems. I, <laughs> he completely forgot about for like 10, 12 years. And I had got on a contract and I gave it to this title company. Now, mind you, I'm new. So I haven't done my research on this on this company yet. Okay. okay. So you, you refer to, to the, the title, title company. company. Referring to the title company. They're okay. supposed to be the best in the area, or a yeah. lot of people use them. I'm not going to say any names. So I don't want to name Gotta protect the innocent. Yeah, yeah. So supposed to be the best in the area. And I give them this deal and I call them every week. And, oh yeah, we're working on it. We're working on it. We're working on it. And as I'm doing that, I'm calling and I'm also closing other deals as well while they're working on it, you know. And so I the, the sellers call me. These are like months later, it's like two months later. Call oh, me, wow. hey, what's going on? Wow. I said, Yeah, the title comes supposedly working on it. And then I call them one day and I ask them, Okay, where exactly are you at with this with this deal? Like break down to me where you're at, because I'm new. I don't know what's going on. I'm thinking, okay, this is a typical deal. It takes a couple months, this house is not you just he said, you know, we're, we're pulling title on it and da da da. And so I call my, this is why it's good to have mentors. I call a mentor. So said, they're pulling title on it. He said, yeah, so they're just getting started. I'm like, they're just getting started. I said, I gave this deal to them like two months ago. He said, you're just getting started on a deal. So what they kind of did, they put me on a back burner. And okay. it was a messy title right. already. I didn't mm-hmm. set the right expectations mm-hmm. with the seller because I didn't have any idea that an inherited property Mm-hmm. Time is so messy and it could take a long time gotcha. to get done. Okay. And so make a long story short, title company was taking their time, taking their sweet time with this title, with this with this process. And I ended up uh, losing the contract and another guy got it from me. Oh, uh, wow. Because my contract expired, I didn't renew the contract and I just didn't know what was going on. And so, so, so when, when the contract the expired, you just, did you literally just let it go? Or I mean, right. I just let it go because I didn't know you're supposed to be. No, I was like, okay, I still have uh, a contract. Okay, you know, okay. I wasn't, I wasn't paying attention to that. Yeah, yeah. So I let that go, and I tried to call him and call him, and he didn't pick up. Like, hey, mm-hmm. we're you know right at the finish line. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this, this, this thing. Lost so, it. so, so the owner, the the seller in this circumstance, he just went with somebody else. Right. So what happened was I saw someone else advertising the property on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was wait. like, hold on, hold on, what, what, like, hold on. And hey, that's, that's, my, that's my, my contract. That's my, yeah. And I like, I got a call from my buyer. He's like, yeah, someone's advertising our deal on Facebook. Wow. And I was like, what? Man. And so I tried to reach out to him, never could get in contact with him. Right. Just lost the deal. So, I mean, I mean, the lesson I learned that is do your due diligence of who you're working with. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you know, make sure that, you know, they're actually working your deals and they're actually doing their job. But since right. then I, I found different title companies and, been you know have some good working relationship to them yeah that's, you know? that's great advice man because i think at the end of the day you know you have to realize that it's your business you know and um if you don't make it happen you don't push it you don't follow up with it you can't expect anybody else to you know so i think that's that you know it's great lessons um and and at the end of the day you know you lost the deal but you kept on going you kept you kept right on going at it so i definitely applaud you for that and folks that are listening that's going to happen. You know, yours is going to look a little bit different, you know, but you're going to fail, but you just got to work your way through it. You got to keep on shooting. So, um, and that was my first one. Like, yeah. imagine like that's your first contract. You got, you got to spread in between. Yeah. Like, okay. I mean, you had the finish line I and mean, you've done you all the this stuff. Line, right. You did all the hard part. I mean, wow. That's, and that's, I guess that's one of the hard parts about it. You know, there's a lot of steps that have to fall in line. Um, and if you neglect a certain step, you can lose the whole deal, you know, and that's definitely probably one of the drawbacks that you run into. So um, right. t- tell us a little bit about some of the books that have had a big impact on you or some of the trainings that you've gone to. You mentioned YouTube videos. So who are your favorite folks out there? You know, they could be on YouTube, you know, authors, uh, trainers and all that kind of stuff. Who, who's had the biggest impact on helping you to to build your skill set? Uh, man, a um, bunch of YouTube videos. Uh, uh, Real Estate Roundup. 
Uh, I don't know if everybody, anybody knows it, but Real Estate Round, they actually do a live Q&A every Tuesday. Wow. That's, so that's, that's how I, I, I really got started because I used to bring all my questions after I was working. Probably like I have a lot of questions and that stuff's going on. I used to ask them in the Real Estate Round, they used to do a lot. And they still do a lot of Q&A. Mm -hmm. Just bring them there and they, add, and, um, they, they answer them for you. I don't know anybody that's, there's not too many few people that's doing that right now. So when right. I first got started, I was, that was huge. Um, watched a lot of uh, Max Maxwell videos on YouTube um, back when he was first getting started. Um, so I watched a bunch of those. Um, I've, I've did so many, so much training. I paid for so much education. So, I mean, that's another thing. Like, mm -hmm. don't be afraid to spend money on yourself. You know, yeah. I remember yeah. the first, one of the first trainings I got, I can't remember who it was. I think it was like a, a Mark Witten. A Mark Witten thing. Um, can't remember. But I think it was Mark it was a Mark Witten wholesaling mm -hmm. package. And he was selling it. And it was like it was a couple hundred dollars. And I was like, man, just I was scared. Right. And I was like, but I was like, man, you spend this on shoes. Like, yeah. Why yeah. not spend it on yourself? Yeah. So I mean that was the that was a starting point of me, you know, spending money on myself to to educate myself. And since then, like, you know, I think I, I spent thousands and thousands of dollars on myself mm. uh, a year just to try right. to educate myself, right. you know, because I think it's, I, I know it's going to, I'm betting on myself. I know it's going to take me to the next level. Absolutely. So, uh, and that's, you, you hit a real good point. You know, you said I would normally spend that money on a pair of shoes. When you think about it, you know, a lot of people do that, but that's one of the reasons why, you know, folks don't, they're not achieving their goals. It's because we're spending our money and our time on some of the wrong things. So yeah, getting to that place, I, I can't remember, I think it might've been Zig Ziglar, um, he said something to the effect of you ought to, you know, basically invest like three to 5% on your education, you know, every year, you know, you start looking right. at that, you're like, man, of my income, you know, that's, that's a good amount, but you know, you end up paying for it two and three times. So, and I'm sure, and I can see the fruit, you know, some of the trainings that, that you've gone through. Um, how do you, you know, how do you actually spot? Cause this is one thing that some newbies might run into some folks who are just getting started. How do you tell whether or not this is just a guru? selling snake oil or if it's actually good content you know that i should actually invest in what advice would you give folks mm, on that one that's a great question so um if 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 you're looking to trying to spot out like who to invest with and what and especially if it's like a mentorship ask mm -hmm. for the huds like hey man let me see some of your huds now mm -hmm. for those who don't know huds are actually closed deals Got you. Which I, I should I should have bought some of mine so you guys mm -hmm. could see some of mine. But if you if anybody wants to see this, I'm fine showing you some of my HUDs uh, that we closed. We got we got some killer ones closed next week. They're supposed to close this week. So mm. uh, so, um, so yeah, just ask for ask for the HUDs and 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 ask for recommendations too. So you know yeah, anybody that's that's, that's been in their course um, that's that's actually doing doing business or just anybody that's been in their in their course in general. Right. Ask them, see what their experience was like and add, ask multiple people. Because after I got, after I um, kind of got screwed over by that one contractor was supposed to be quote unquote mentoring me. I did my research and I found out he had so many judgments in the system yep. for, for uh, just, I don't I think one was like larceny and mm. tax evasion. And I was like, yeah. oh my God, I was, I was with this guy. Like, what was yeah. I thinking? Yeah. You know, so I, I typed and just out of nowhere, I just typed, so let me look up this guy. Right. I, I typed in the name and it was like, oh my God. So from then on, I just, you just got to make sure you do your background research. Yeah. On it. So, yeah. Um, and and, and I just make sure I just do my, do your due diligence. Due diligence. People. Yeah. That's do a, that's, due diligence. if, if, if you don't know that term, get to know it because you'll do due diligence in every aspect, many aspects of real estate. You know, if you're buying a property, you got to do diligence in terms of inspections. You got title search diligence. Um, you got you got to vet people. Um, but even here, you know, the, the beauty of where we are right now is that we live in an information age. You know, and I look, you know, literally you it was a, it was a, a you are a keystroke away from information about this guy. You know, and you've got all these different forums um, through, you know, bigger pockets, through um, real estate roundup, you know, through different Facebook groups out there. All you got to do is say, hey, I'm thinking about taking, you know, so and so's course. Has anybody taken it? And folks will hit you back right away. And they're like, nah, don't take it. You know, that's $20,000 $20, wasted, you know, versus some of the the, the more uh, reputable folks. You know, like you said, they're doing deals. 
Um, they've got good reviews and people, you know, people vouch for them, you know, and, right. and I think that's, that's important um, because there's probably little that's more frustrating than, you know, starting out and saying, okay, I got $5,000 to, 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 to invest into education. And then you go and you give that to some guy and you never hear from him again. So right. yeah, that, that's, Absolutely. that's key, man. And that's, you know, yeah. I, I'm glad you, glad you, you know, share that with us today. Um, tell yeah, us, tell you, us a little bit. Diligence. Yeah, for sure. That's, that's I, I, I'll tell you uh, just a short little story. So when I, when I first went, uh, my, my first, uh, mentors and, and great friends now, Brent Adam, um, I actually, I reached out to them and then I actually flew down to make sure they were legit. Like I mm. flew down, had a chance to check out the whole operation, make sure they were legit. So I was like, determined. I was like, I'm not going to get got anymore. <laughs> <laughs> like this is not going to happen. Right, you know, right. Cause I had right. lost so much money with that property. I was like, okay, yeah. that's a lesson learned. I'm not going to have that happen anymore. Yeah, for you sure. Know? For sure. So you, so you literally, you vetted these guys in person. You weren't, you, oh, Google, yeah. Google wasn't enough. You had to go and Google actually see the enough. office and make sure they didn't have this elaborate setup of being behind it was milk crates and right. stuff like that. So right. I had, uh, that's, I had to. Uh, that's good stuff, man. Um, so, so, you know, we, how, how do, how do folks get a hold of you? You know, if, if somebody wants to, wants to reach out to you, uh, what's a good way to get a hold of uh, of 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 you? Where, where are you? Are you on uh, so, social media? So I, I took a break from Instagram right now just because it is a distraction and I'm ramping up. Um, mm -hmm. So I took a break, but when I get back on, it's, it's uh, Jet Set E. Okay, um, that's my IG. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But when uh, so when I get going, y'all, I just I just been taking a break so I can just ramp up some things, just trying to mm -hmm. focus. But for the most part, if you want to find me. Um, just reach out to me on Facebook. It's uh, Eric Bryant, or um, just shoot me an email. Shoot me an yeah. email at uh, cashhomesvirginia at gotcha. gmail.com. Yeah, and we'll we'll put we'll put your contact information down in the comment section and whatnot. Um, so yeah, man. Hey, thank you so much for uh, just shedding light on this subject of wholesaling. Um, I do know you know several people start with wholesaling, and it's definitely a great bridge. I mean, folks make a lot of money wholesaling. I mean, they make a ton of money. And then some folks use wholesaling as a bridge, um, but you know it's a it's a it's a key part of my business. You know I depend on wholesalers to bring me deals. You know I love wholesalers. You know they you know they, they definitely my first property, my first deal was through a wholesaler, and it's, mm -hmm. it's still my favorite property. You know so at the end of the day they're a key cog in the wheel. Um, but yeah, if you guys are looking to get started, um, you got questions, reach out to me, reach out to Eric. You know we're here to help you guys um, in your journey. And, and I think, you know, just like you talk about Adam and Brent, you know, giving information back, trying to share and to help folks. That's the same mentality that, that you bring to the table. I know that I bring to the table, too. So, again, man, thank you so much for uh, for coming to hang out today and uh, just just blessing us with Appreciate a wealth of information, man. So, hey, guys, this is uh, this has been Marseille, the property pastor with my man, Eric Bryant, Cash Homes, Virginia, doing it big here in the 757 in Virginia. And uh, look, we know, we wish nothing but the best for you guys. Thanks again for tuning in. Um, we love y'all. God bless. And, uh, and have a great day. Till the next time we see you again. Take care. Thank you.